Happy Thursday. I assume that you're all cooped up along with me. I'm sort of cooped up. I am working from my garage academy. So here in the garage, I'm just north of Alpharetta, Georgia. I have all of my computer, my color equipment, a uh, 365, a Suma cutter. Uh, I'm building, as you can see, a lot of the things on the ground, this, these uh, carpets, I made those, uh, manufactured those out of some foam and some pre-cut vinyl. I'm building backdrops. I have another backdrop coming, uh, so we can do a big one out of latex durable fabrics. Um, I just got in some photo tech, so I'm going to be doing a lot of wall coverings, probably some of the backdrops over there wall covering. Also, uh, some floor graphics. There's a product out by Jessup Manufacturing called Catwalk. Uh, they also have a Tex Walk, Asphalt Art, Sport Walk. There's a large collection. That's all going to go on the floor as well. Anti slip latex printable materials that I can print on the ground. So we're trying to turn the garage into sort of an experimental center for all the things that I talk about today that you can print on. I have about an hour. This usually goes a little long. I'm going to try to keep it to an hour. There's a lot to cover. To some extent, I understand you can only take so much information at once, so I'll try to keep it concise. But there's a lot of things in our applications portfolio that you can print on successfully with a latex. For those of you who have latex printers, which I think might be the majority, you have one big benefit during this sequester shutdown. If you're, all my printers in the demo center, our demo center is currently closed. All of my printers, I have seven of them, I can monitor all of them from home through the print OS. The part of the print OS that manages and monitors is called print beat. Uh, there's another one on there, uh, calibration. So I can confirm that all of the printers are working fine. They're all on. They're all uh, in hibernation, but they're there. Plus, I have a phone app, which tells me all the printers are fine. They're all working. And what's nice about Latex is because it's a water-based thermal ink technology, sitting idle for a large period of time is not that big a deal. Now, we have a process, we have some recommendations. If it's going to be there for a long period, we would even recommend taking the, the print heads out and putting them in their recap. I think just having it plugged in somewhere with power is fine. If the power goes out, it's not the end of the world. Because it's a water-based ink, because it has thermal print heads, it is very forgiving in these situations if it has extended downtime. That is definitely not true of UV and solvent. So at the end of this shutdown, there's going to be a whole bunch of weeping and crying in the solvent camps and in the UV camps when they go in and find out that you can't leave a solvent printer unattended for weeks at a time. It's going to, go, it's going to clog the print heads. It's going to clog the lines. If they lose power, they're really, really in trouble because that printer has a constant cycle of having to print and purge in order to operate. That is not true of a latex printer. You know, I have a Z, you can't quite see it. I have a Z60-200 sitting here that I, I almost never run. It, I mean, it will sit for six months. I do nothing. Right now, it's printing very high quality, museum quality, fine art reproductions that I'm sort of mounting and giving away to some friends of mine. I haven't used that printer in eons. But like the latex, it is water-based thermal print head, and it's designed to just sit there quietly until you need it. It took me about an hour to get the print heads running to get everything going. So it wasn't that much of an investment, and I have not had to replace print heads. Same with this latex. I have it here, but in all honesty, I don't use it very much. So I come down maybe once a month and run something. Now I'm running it every day, and because it's a thermal latex, when I loaded it, I didn't even worry that even though it had sat there maybe for the last three months without somebody using it, I knew it would be fine. So some of the inherent advantages of latex are becoming very manifest right now with the shutdown. Without further ado, I will move on to the applications. Um, this webinar is about what you can print with. And since we know what you print to some degree, there's a a setting on the latex printers where you allow us to kind of have some idea. It's all done anonymous. We don't know who you are. 
We, we are not interested in spying on you. All we want to collect is what do you print? So when you choose self-adhesive vinyl as a category and you print something, that goes to a collection Fibonacci data that says they printed this much. Now that's all voluntary. If you want to tell us you get nothing, you can send us nothing. That's fine. We don't use it for any nefarious purposes. There's all kinds of controls on it. All we want to know is how long do your print heads last? And we want to know what do you print? And if we know what you print, then we know how to build a printer that takes advantage of the different markets. You know, in Brazil, for example, they might print 90% of is either adhesive vinyl or banner. So they don't really have a fabric market. They don't really have a decor market. And so we focus on what people actually want to do with them. The most widely used thing is adhesive vinyl. Adhesive vinyl breaks into three basic categories. Cast, which is this. It's going to be either, for most people, 3M IJ-180, 3M-480 Envisions film, Avery-1105. I forget what the Oracal cast skew is. They have a couple of them now. There's an, a new Arlon cast, which I hear very good things about. And also MacTac makes one called Groove. 3M IJ-180 probably is, if I had to guess, 70% of the market. That's what most of the installers like. They have a dominant position. We have a seven-year MCS with 3M. That means if you print it and you laminate it, and we have no wait time, no gas off, you can print and laminate right away. You print it, you laminate it, you install it, following their laminate and their system, seven years. Nobody else has seven years. Most of them have five. So when we start comparing honestly to genuine eco-solvent printers, they don't have the outdoor color fastness that latex does. Our pigments last longer than theirs do in the sun. And that's largely confirmed by 3M's own testing. The 3M MCS system is 3M system. It's not HP's. We didn't invent it. We sent it to them. They rate it. So to get that seven-year warranty, I think, is exceptional. It indicates how good our color fastness genuinely is when we go outside. And I think that's a key selling point for latex. You can print on any of these cast vinyls. Uh, 480 is just 3M's attempt to make a PVC-free product because the market, little by little, is moving towards PVC-free products. Polyvinyl chloride is kind of a target for a lot of sustainable and environmental action that this causes problems in leaching in landfills. So if it's possible to go away from PVC, that does seem to be the global direction, albeit slowly. Europe, for example, is very focused on PVC-free products much more so through regulations than the U.S. Right now, I think we have bigger problems on our hands, but still, the 480 has another advantage in that it's so highly conformable, they use it both for vehicle wraps and for building wraps. So if you're wrapping around cinder block or brick, that's what you would use now. And also, you only need one laminate for the 480 3M. IJ-180 may require different laminates depending on the contourability of a given area. Also, you have Avery. I use a lot of the 1105, excellent wrap vinyl, and then this is the MacTac groove. I don't have any of the, the Arlon or Orifol uh, with me, mostly because I can't get, I can't get anything right now. I'm kind of stuck. I don't have I have a limited space for all my rolls over here, and I can't fit any more in. That's your cast vinyl. Usually runs about $800 a roll. It's for conformable vehicles, generally a vehicle wrap. Now, the next step, you have two categories of what we call calendared vinyl. I loosely call them economy or El Cheapo vinyl and intermediate grade. There are two different types of polymeric vinyl. They're different from cast vinyl and the price reflects that. Usually you're looking at half or a third of the price that you would see with a cast vinyl. A classic example of that for me, which I have on the printer behind me, is the 3M IJ40. Uh, in Arlon, it's going to be the 2900. Uh, HP makes a line called the Prime, and they have Prime CP, Prime GP, Prime Optima. Those are all what we call calendared polymeric. A calendared polymeric is an intermediate grade vinyl. I like intermediate grade vinyls, or, and I prefer them for print and cut. I know they cost a little more. Some of the HP products have got the price down considerably. 
Uh, I think the aura fall that I'm thinking of, I have one here, 3551. That's a very nice intermediate grade polymeric vinyl. It's a longer chemical chain. It costs more to make it. It has longer outdoor durability. It won't curl like the El Cheapo stuff will. It usually has a superior liner. What I like about it is when I do print and cut, printer to cutter, sometimes printer to laminator to cutter, the process is accelerated or made more assured by the fact that the vinyl is always nice and flat. It is much more resistant to temperature, and as a result, it doesn't deform in the accuracy through the printer to the laminator to the cutter is upheld. Um, I, when I run IJ40 or Avery 2900 or 3551, which is primarily what I do at trade shows, I know there's not going to be any problems. I can print and cut from the pinch rollers. I have a lot of flexibility and freedom, and the product always comes out perfect. Also for print and cut, when it goes into this little basket back there, I'm, I do long runs. So I routinely print and cut for very long periods of time unattended with the cutter finding the next barcode automatically. There's only one glitch in my workflow. And that's when it drops in the basket, does it fold nicely on itself or does it stick up like rigid and then refuse to fold? Because if it sticks up rigid, it can cause the cutter to catch it and it'll do a head strike and it'll stop my cutting. Now I don't have unattended cutting, but if it folds nicely in the basket, then I can cut long jobs. And then at the end, I can either roll it back up to the take up or I can cut it, lay it out on a table. So if you have something like that, you'll usually see it in a mono or a polymeric vinyl will be more forgiving to have that nice fold. It usually has a better liner. The material is not quite as stiff. It's more flexible. And then it has to do with the chemistry. Now, the last selection is your El Cheapo. So that would be 3MIJ35, um, Aurafol 3640, Avery 3303. So this is an Avery 3303. Um, this is what you get when you go online and say, I want to roll a 50-inch adhesive vinyl, and I want the cheapest roll I can find. So it's going to run anywhere from 100 to, say, $130. It's inexpensive. It's meant to be indoor or short-term outdoor, but people frequently use it for long-term outdoor. Sometimes that's a mistake. Sometimes it's not. That's your monomeric vinyls. They work great. There's no issue. One thing to be concerned with is that they have heat sensitivity. So when I run monomerics on a latex printer, I tend to run about 210 degrees, anywhere from like 195 to 220, depending on the monomeric vinyl. Um, Arlon 510, that's their brand. Um, HP does not have a monomeric vinyl. Their prime line is trying to get polymeric vinyl, like the CP, at a monomeric price, and I think there's a virtue in that. But all of those monomeric vinyls work. A lot of companies, they'll have their own line of products, you know, OEM monomeric lines of vinyl. There's some big manufacturers in the world, Rit Rama, MacTac, who make it for a lot of different people. It's a very common vinyl. One thing to be aware of with a latex is sometimes when you're printing back from the pinch rollers, it rolls forward. And then because of the nature of the vinyl and the liner, it gets static electricity. And then when the fans come on, it will try to get pulled up into the uh, curing platen. I have been told that the solution to that, one of the solutions is to roll it forward. One solution is to affix a leader, like another piece of vinyl and let it hang down. You can run it back. Another solution is to upgrade your vinyl to a polymeric that won't do it, like the HP Prime or uh, Avery 2900 series. But a third option that I just heard recently is what you do is you, uh, so this, I'll just use this as an example. This is coming out the front of the printer, right? Like, let's say this is a clean roll and it's coming out, it's 54 inches wide. What they'll do is they trim about two inches, just the vinyl, not the liner. They just trim along the front edge about two inches. This is a little bigger than two inches. And then they roll it back. For some reason, that extra vinyl not being on the liner when it comes through, it allows it to lay flatter and not get pulled. So I've been told. 
I do not have a roll of monomeric vinyl here, so I can't test it. It came from a friend of mine in the European division. So since we're all on, you know, uh, conference calls all day talking to each other, we, he told me about this. He says, yeah, I, I found a solution for this monomeric to trim off the front edge, lift it, and then you can run through there and it doesn't get pulled up. Now, I haven't had a chance, but he's a very reliable source, one of the most knowledgeable, knowledgeable guys I know. Now, how he figured out to try this, I haven't the slightest idea. But supposedly it works quite well. So those are one of your solutions. So all of those vinyls are fair game. Cast, monomeric, polymeric. We have presets on the media locator for the vast majority of them. If you don't have a preset, making your own preset on a Latex 365 or 500 series is super easy. It's three steps, two of which are automatic. If you download something and you don't like the look of it, or let's say you download 480, and it's eight pass, 100% density, and you want richer color. You get richer color by adding more ink. So 120 or 30% density is gonna look better than a 100 to hit certain Pantone colors like reds. All you have to do with what's downloaded is say, add a new print mode, and with the new print mode, you add a 120, 10 pass, or 120, 12 pass, hit the ICC creation, you can make your own preset. So now you have your own color calibration, and your own ICC profile that's linked to a different pass mode with more ink. General rule of thumb, the faster you go, the less amount of ink, and usually the more temperature that's required. So a typical curve for vinyl will be six pass, 80 or 90% density at 235 degrees. Eight pass at a 100% density at 230 degrees. 10 pass at 110% density at 230 degrees. You get the idea. So it's lower the number, six pass, eight pass, less ink, less saturation, same resolution because it's always 1200 DPI in a latex printer, and then you may have to adjust your heat. Just depends. If a, if a material is heat sensitive, then that's your line. You have a fixed heat sensitivity. And then as you go faster, you need to put less ink down so it can completely cure. Your traditional curve is faster, less ink, heat can be a variable. Okay, so most of what I'm running here, which is presentational, I want high quality. I'm usually running 100% density or better in eight pass or better. All right, moving on from vinyl. Oh, I should probably add one more thing. This is reflective and engineering grade. You can print on this with latex. We have warranties for this through 3M. If you just print black, okay, if all you're doing is black on orange or black on white, this can be done with any of the latex printers. It will meet Federal Highway, and it is, I believe, a 10-year warranty. If you want to print colors like this, this is an engineering grade, not the high intensity, but I have the colors here. If this were high intensity, the same idea would apply. You can print it. It works. It looks great. We have presets to download from the media locator but the colors will not be Federal Highway certified. Unless you buy a version of Flexi with a 365 only, and you can pair those up so that we have a version that's called the highway traffic version, the presets are specifically dialed in to match both the reflectivity needs as well as the Pantone, and then we have warranties anywhere from 10 to 13 years, depending on the color. Those are Federal Highway with a special program. All of the printers can do black, and meet Federal Highway. One printer with a special program can do colors and meet Federal Highway. If you're just doing stuff for a shopping mall or a Chick-fil-A or something like that, that's not Federal Highway. You can print this on high intensity reflective or you can print it on high or a ref, engineering grade and you will it will look great, but it's not gonna have Federal Highway certifications. In all these cases, you're gonna laminate. Anything that's on expensive engineering grade or high intensity prismatic laminate is a must. And it's part of their system that they put together. But what I wanna mention is we're able to do Federal Highway. We're able to have Federal Highway custom software for it. 
and you can still use that latex printer to do all the other things you want to do. You're not fixed in having a printer that only does one thing like our competitors highway signage. That's a one trick pony, it does one thing. This is designed to do all the other stuff you see here in addition to highway signage. Another thing that I do with print and cut, and since I have it here, I'll mention it, I do a lot of heat transfer. The primary two products I use for heat transfer are Caesar and Polytape. Those are both manufacturers. I also frequently use Chemica. That's a very nice product, SEF, and um, Stahl sometimes, but not, not that much. So it's usually for me Polytape and Caesar and then Chemica on occasion. SEF is French and I don't get a lot of it here. Now they may be reselling under other names, I don't know. Your heat those are your primary manufacturers. So everyone is gonna be selling some version of this. This is made by Polytape, they're made over in Germany. Very nice product, high end. You run it just like adhesive vinyl. You print it, you weed it, you transfer it with a laminate. Think of it just like, a, like a paper transfer like you did for cut vinyl. You transfer with a laminate onto the t-shirt. A $350 heat shirt press gets it done. So you definitely have options to do heat transfer and heat transfer is done with a print and cut. Moving on to similar adhesive vinyls but more specialization. So this is a seal easy dot. Um, I'm gonna do window graphics for all my front windows. I have a lot of them. And I wanna try static cling, I wanna use clears. So I'm gonna try this seal easy dot. I have a roll of this. Seal easy dot is a kind of a suction cup. Uh, a lot of companies make something like this. It's, a, it's easy for the, for the non-expert to install. It's even easier than static cling. So, and it's repositionable. So if you kind of goof it up, you can put it in. The Seal Easy Dot is, a, you have a little logo there, certified. So it's a certified media, you download it. We have it in white and clear. This is also print and cuttable. So you can contour cut this. I'm gonna do a little contour cuts and then put some of this in the front window. This is the Seal Easy Dot as well. Same thing, Dry Tack has a version of this that I've seen. This is the General Formulations White Static Cling, also certified. This is another one I'm gonna put in the windows. And I'm gonna compare ease of use, ease of installation, how long does it last. I'm gonna put these on the outside of the window with no laminate. If you put a laminate, of course, they will last longer. The purpose of a laminate with latex, it's less and less really about scratch resistance. It's more about UV. So the scratch resistance on this Gen 3 laminate or Gen 3 latex is outstanding. So you really get a very good scratch resistance, just inherent in the product. What you want to uh, be concerned with laminate is two things. Either the extreme environment it's in, like on a car driving down the highway with dirt and grit and everything hitting it, or on the floor with people walking over it and people dragging strollers, baby strollers, luggage, and God forbid skateboarders. It just is so damaging to it that you wanna put a heavy duty laminate to protect it. And then the last reason, the other reason is UV. So if you have something that you want to have a high outdoor time, you put the UV on because it's gonna give you about three additional years in many cases to not being laminated. So the UV is, it's gonna be outside, it's gonna be outside for a long time, laminate it. The only reason I laminate really for most outdoor applications other than what I mentioned with the vehicles is I wanna make sure that it doesn't fade. And a lot of the uh, window graphic stuff here, I might laminate depending. Some of these companies change this stuff out pretty regularly. So there really isn't make a lot of sense in lamination. It's a judgment call. You can certainly do it. It'll certainly give it better lamination or better UV protection. And sometimes when things are in a window, they are catching sun directly all day long. That's also a case where you might wanna put a laminate. I take pictures of terrible signs. I have a huge collection of them dating back years. I just saw one recently at a gas station car wash. They had a menu up that was in direct sunlight and every single thing was so faded, it was ludicrous that they even kept it up there. I mean, they should just go out with a, with a drill and just pull it off the wall because it's, it's working against them at this point. That's the kind of thing where getting a long-term laminate durability can really make a difference. So moving on from the easy dot, general formulations, now I'm into all your perfs. I'm gonna play around with all these. 
I have run the entire portfolio of Clear Focus, um, all the different hole sizes, and then paper and uh, plastic liners. I think the plastic liners work better than the paper liners. The paper reacts more to the heat. I can get both of them to work. I don't see any problem with these synthetic liners whatsoever. I didn't have any issues with it. And so I built presets for all of these. Now you can't really build a preset directly on window perf because it's such an irregular surface, it's not readable. So what I do is I build it on a similar material. This is where we get back to polymeric and monomeric. So I get with the folks, you know, Debbie Ross over there at Clear Focus and say, what is this? Oh, the classic focus, that's a, that's a cast. Okay, so then I use a cast vinyl to represent that. What's this other stuff? It's monomeric, it's very inexpensive, the Econoview. Well, with a monomeric vinyl, then I'm gonna to try to use a similar product from Avery or for 3M that's monomeric, build it on there, and then transfer that to the window perf. I'm lining up like to like. This is just adhesive vinyl with holes cut in it, but there's different kinds of adhesive vinyl, and that's what I wanna figure out. And then a synthetic liner and a paper liner can react differently. Uh, this is all the clear forecast portfolio. Aurafall also has a nice window perf. Uh, Transcendia is another company I've worked with their window perf. Uh, Avery has window perf. I mean, it's adhesive vinyl with holes. Somebody makes it. Continental makes a very nice window perf. All of those work. HP used to be in the window perf business, but we've exited. Um, it was a nice product. It was just, I think, priced a little bit too high. Moving on from adhesive vinyl, next most widely used is Banner. Um, I use a lot of Bantex, it's US made, it's very high quality, it's extremely heat resistant, it never buckles or uh, warps, it has a curl free property in some of their SKUs which I like a lot, I use that for hanging banners, and this 10 ounce black back I also use for roll ups. I think it has a nice texture to it, um, it's kind of got like a matte finish, um, it's probably my go-to banner for most applications. I realize it sits at a higher price point, but I also like the qualities of it. Um, next up, Ultraflex, the Ultima Pro certified. I use a lot of Ultraflex. Here's the Jetflex matte, but it's also running at four pass. So I have this on a 570 running at four pass, 335 square feet an hour. No issues. I'm probably running it at 70% density. So you're not going to get some huge popping Pantone red, but you know, let's face it, most of the banners are hanging on a chain link fence, you know, one flap hanging down, and it's not exactly like super high quality is always demanded of a banner. You have, orange just has to be orange. Then I have some double sided. This is a really good Bantex product. H, or, uh, Ultraflex also makes a nice one. Bantex 18 ounce block out. Very good tensile strength. This is what I would like for pole banners outside. Very strong. HP can do double-sided printing. 365 and 500 series, it's automated. We have a built-in system with all of the software. You print on one side, I run three or four rows of the stuff. Take the uh, take-up reel, swap it into the feed reel, load it in, it finds the registration marks, and then prints all the side Bs. You can do it with a 315 or a 335 but it's manual and it's definitely gonna require some finesse. I do have people doing it. Ultraflex Ultra Blockout 15, it's print side A, print side B. Again, blockout banners I use quite a bit for double-sided printing. This is probably my go-to for double-sided printing, Bantex 13 ounce two-sided curl-free. And the reason why, let's say the Atlanta airport's gonna have a new wing and they wanna hang a bunch of you know, hanging kind of pole banners all the way down the interior walkway. So I'm looking for a double-sided product that is going to look good. What I see frequently is people give them a double-sided product, but that product inherently curls. It's just made that way. So it hangs and then very shortly in, it starts curling up at the edges. Even if you didn't print on it and hung it, it will curl at the edges because that's the nature of the material. I think that looks terrible. What Bantex says is if you use our banner and hang it there, double-sided, it won't curl. So then when you see all the way down the row, you get a nice, smooth, flat, kind of matte to luster type product that you can see the image clearly, it looks good, and it doesn't curl over time. That's what I'd be looking for, and I would upsell the company to convince them, showing them a bunch of curled banners, that you don't want that. You don't want it to all curl up on you. 
curled banners like that just says liquor store, going out of business sale. It's just something that gets put up because somebody doesn't want to spend any money and it gets the job done temporarily. But if you're going to hang all that stuff in an airport, there's a chance it's going to be up there for a while. Also, you have UltraFlex Ultra Mesh. Now, mesh, you have two options. Option one is you use a liner mesh, which is kind of what you'd have to use if you have no ink collectors. If you have the latex ink collectors, like the 365 and the 500 does, I use unlinered mesh. Yes, it fills up the ink collectors. I just, there's a million ways you can either replace them, which is what we recommend. I've seen people use filter systems. I've people take them out and then put different foam in. I've seen it all. I get it. You know, you're going to be creative. But ideally, you want to replace the inserts. Those are a consumable. I have, th the way I do it is I have three complete sets of inserts, and I rotate them. And when I'm done, I take the other ones, I take a cloth here, I get up the worst of it, I set it out in the sun, and I just keep rotating until those are full. That's going to take a while. If you did a lot of mesh, they're going to fill up fairly quickly, but most people don't. But if you get a mesh job, unlinered, ink collector, you get the good price point and you don't have to deal with the liner. If you want to run on linered mesh, you can leave the flat platens in and you can run it on any latex printer. The trouble with linered mesh is you have heat, you have liner, you have mesh. The goal is to print on it and peel the liner away and then use the mesh. But invariably, that liner is made to try to stick. And if it sticks too much, it's hard to pull off. If it sticks too little, it comes off during the print process. If the roll's been sitting around for a while, that adhesive from the liner and the mesh becomes unstable. I have encountered more grief from linered mesh than unlinered mesh. Unlinered mesh is a straightforward proposition. Linered mesh is a different proposition because I have to print it. If I heat it too much, now the liner sticks to the mesh and I have like two guys standing with their feet trying to pull it off from there. And that takes too long. Or it alternately, the liner separates from the mesh and now you have a really problem because now vacuum is holding the liner down and the heat's allowing to mesh to get up and you'll have head strikes. So I have run linered mesh successfully. I've run the UltraFlex linered mesh successfully, but it requires lower temperature with, so if you lower the temperature, you're gonna usually use a little less ink and then run it at a slower speed. Because if you put a bunch of heat on that UltraFlex mesh, it'll warp. And when it does, it'll curl and head strike. Also, sometimes the liner will kind of try to stick to the heat platens. I've seen that before. So an incompatible liner on the mesh. All of those things can be variables with a linered mesh. Um, I'm just saying that I've heard more noise in my channel on linered mesh. I hear virtually no noise with unlinered mesh. You can get around the linered mesh issue in most cases, but it takes some finesse to get there. Uh, these are just examples of double-sided printing. Um, since it's a unique feature, I think that Latex has UltraFlex blockout, this is a Natura. This is a polypropylene. It's coated actually on both sides. And then also Kernow has a nice double-sided light black film. Those would be point of purchase, point of sale. Things that would hang from the ceiling, like when we open up our, I guess supermarkets are still open, so you could do it in a supermarket. A lot of other places are not currently hanging signs. But they will, and we'll be back. And that's how you would do it. Keep in mind that with a lot of double-sided products, especially polypropylene and especially polyester, sometimes what they do is they coat one side and they don't coat the other. Or they coat one side and a different types of coatings on the two sides. Usually they're not gonna coat both sides. Now latex usually can print on just about anything with or without coating. But sometimes on a polyester or a polypropylene, You'll print side A, which is the coated side, it prints great. And then you go to print side B and you're like, okay, none of this is working. It's not working because there's no coating that's sympathetic to it. You're trying to go right into the polypropylene. Your settings have to be different. So I will sometimes have settings for side A with a coated material and then settings for side B for a coated material being totally different. And that's just the nature of printing on a coated and uncoated side or a universal coated on one side and a solvent coated on another. Sometimes you may have different speed, different temperature, and different ink settings. I think on this Natura, side A and side B, I have 90% ink on one side and 80% on another in different temperature settings. 
Coding gives you, whether it's a solvent coating, an aqueous coating, universal coating, it gives you some advantages to put the ink down because the coating is assisting. If you do not have a coating on a polypropylene, like a UPO with no coating, it has nothing to grip to. And it's trying to grip to that, that polypropylene. And it will, but at 200 degrees. And then what happens to the polypropylene? It warps. You get this kind of wavy warp. I can't sell polypropylene hanging visibly with visible like waves in it. Customer's not gonna buy that. So you lower the temperature and now it doesn't dig. So a lot of things with very heat sensitive materials, getting an aqueous coating is always your best choice. Solvent would be the next best or universal so that that coating can help it land there and, it, and, and the heat does not affect the material. Your other banner choice here, these are things you can do that I think are more unique to latex. I would call it sustainable or green. They can either be a combination of polyester non-wovens, fully recyclable products, or also paper-based products. All of those are moving away from PVC. I think that's a smart play. I think it's a smart play because I would look for cu customers, if I were a print service provider, who have deep pockets and who are gonna pay me well with a decent margin. And the way you get those is looking for customers that are committed to green and sustainable, okay? The margin at Whole Foods with $10 a pound chicken is probably better than the margin you have at lower end supermarkets that are competing you know, with any chicken at the lowest possible price. So you have more cushion. You know, Apple, they make a much larger margin on their laptops than we do. And it's a premium laptop. There is only premium laptops. We have are in all kinds of different spaces. So we take lower margins because we're playing in those spaces. Apple only space that plays in one space and it's the high end market. Not everyone can afford an Apple. So they have smaller market share, but they get good m profits on each thing. That's what this banner is. So this is DuPont, Tyvek, standard Tyvek. There's about nine different Tyvek SKUs on there, different purposes and thicknesses. They all print well. This is a really good choice for customers who are looking for sustainable options. There's just two different kinds of Tyvek. Then you have Dixon. Dixon is a French company. They specialize in PVC-free roll-up, wallpaper, and display. Um, I have Dixon back here. So this is uh, Bill and Dave in their glory days. And then the garage rules. Uh, HP was a garage company. We started in a garage. It's a historical site in Palo Alto. The garage is kept exactly the way it was. And you realize that in 1939 or 40, when they were doing this, people had a lot less. You look at that garage and go, man, it's like half of what I, it's a third of what I have here. I have all these gadgets and tools and power tools. They had a very small set. Definitely go online and take a look at the original HP garage because we arguably invented Silicon Valley. HP was the original Silicon Valley garage company and so much of it all has roots uh, to Bill and Dave. Dixon anyway, great product, really cool, like it, PVC free, nice canvas look to it. This is their roll-up banner. This is what HP uses for our trade shows. It looks really nice. It has a nice flat surface good luster, it gives a good high-end appearance. I see a lot of roll-up banners that look terrible. I mean, terrible. I would be everywhere I go, if I were in print service, I'd be taking pictures of them, getting with the people and going, this isn't that much more. And it's PVC free. You can do the whole sustainability message. It's Forest Stewardship Council, Green Guard certified, PVC free, and it looks spectacular. So it hits all the right spots to have an upcharge. Dixon, more of it, PVC free. This is the white backdrop. Sill makes a text banner. It's more of a paper base banner. Mohawk tear resistant fabric banner. HP has a high density polyethylene. And then Berger Matisse, this is like a canvas style banner. Lastly, we have Coveris Magic. The Coveris is 100% recycled from water bottles. When you put up a sign, like let's say you go into REI and they have a big display of mountain climbers and it's all done on a display that's 100% recycled water bottles, you know that they're going to have a big sign next to it that explains REI's commitment to recycling and the whole story of the water bottles is almost better than the value of whatever is on the display. 
And that story about the sustainability in the water bottles is the thing that people say, yeah, you know, REI's is about $20 more than this other place, but I like shopping at REI. I mean, this is a good company. It's a good product. They're committed to sustainability and the things I believe in, so I don't mind paying a little extra. That also allows you as a print service provider to play in those spaces using water-based harmless latex inks with no harmful VOCs, no nickel, no recycling requirements. We are and always have been the sustainable ink company, water-based safe inks, and we pair it with water bottle prints. Everything works out perfectly, and you as a print service provider get better margins than what you're going to get playing around in a scrim banner market. Scrim banner market is a consumable market. You can make money, but not much, and everyone else is doing it. They have an old Mamaki solvent in a garage just like this, and they'll do scrim banners, you know, a dime a dozen. Big manufacturers have like a dollar square foot scrim banner day. You want to be in the water bottle market, 100% recycled, environmentally friendly. Those printers can't do that. They're using stinky old solvent printers. You want to be focused on non-stinky. Latex, by the way, has no odor. It has no smell. Uh, so in those kind of markets, you're never going to have a problem with outgassing or smell or odor that's going to be very off-putting to a high-end customer. Next up, paper. I'm going to keep this very simple. There are certain papers that work really well with Gen 3 latex and other papers that work, but you have to have a real understanding of the printer and the paper to make it work. So I get more noise in paper in my channel than any other thing. This doesn't work. That poster paper doesn't work. It buckles and head strikes. It all has to do with settings. I have some very good YouTube videos on how to print on paper. I recommend them. It'll definitely make things easier for you. But if you don't want to go through all that, okay, you don't have to. HP has two key papers that I think are excellent. One is the professional, this is the professional satin photo paper. Behind it, the everyday satin photo paper. These are resin coated. They are coated specifically to take latex ink on the surface and not cause the paper to warp or buckle. The other good one, SIL 3699 Trisol. That is a very good choice. That's an excellent choice. 3686, also a good choice. I like the 99 a little better. HP has a new premium poster paper. This is at the lower end. HP White Satin. This is a latex impregnated paper. Also, because it's latex impregnated, they call it wet strength. Wet strength papers tend to do well with this gen of latex. Here's another 3686 Trisol. Fibermark, they make a nice thing called Endura. It's now called Nina. Okay, it was, it's all rolled into a company called Nina, and Nina makes the Endura 225. Poster paper, that's a very good choice. It is a wet strength paper again. Wet strength papers resist buckling or curling when they get wet. There's your Endura, and they allow for a pretty high level of success running this generation of latex. Let me explain why Gen 3 has had some problems with paper. We invented a thing on the Gen 3 called Optimizer. An Optimizer lays down on the material just a small amount, and with it, we put the ink that is attracted to the Optimizer. The Optimizer is chemically charged. The ink is chemically charged. They're attracted. It's like a magnet in a tomato, magnet in a paper cup, drop it off a seven-story building. The super strong, rarest magnets pull the tomato down into the cup. That's what we're doing with ink and the surface of the material using a charged thing called optimizer. It allows us to run a lot faster with no image quality. We don't need two sets of heaters, and we can just push material through there with no heat in the print zone, no image quality defects as a result of that heat. In almost every application, we improve. We're faster with more ink. Everything works better, except paper. Not all papers, but some papers. When you drop a bunch of water on paper and you leave it there, and then you bring it into a heater all at the same time, when it has not been any of it's been evaporated, it causes what in the industry is called cockling. You know, go to. Uh, I have two books that are sitting out in the sun right now because I let them get wet last night, and now all that paper with that water is curled up all over the place because the water is causing the paper to curl. There's nothing I can do about it. 
I can turn them over and try to put weights on them to try to stiffen out that paper, but it has its own mind. You put a bunch of water on paper like this, the paper will try to buckle and curl. Your solution is lower the amount of ink, lower the temperature. You can get it to work. Those are the two keys, temperature and ink load, the amount of water and how hot it hits that curing zone. With that said, I run just about all the other papers too, including cardstocks, red 12 point cardstock, whole roll, whole roll. Here's another one on the inside print of the same cardstock. Now, this is a acrylic coated cardstock. The coating gives me some assistance, and so at 70% density, I'm getting a pretty good looking print. Sill has a cardstock, the Glamour. This is a little testier. You might have to run a narrower roll. The narrower the roll, 36 inches on an unstable media is much more stable than 60 inches. So it might work at 636, but then you go to 54 and it starts buckling in the center. Usually the result is a pocketing right in the middle of the material. You can play with a vacuum to your heart's content. Generally, I run vacuum a little higher on some papers, but it's not a vacuum issue. It's a heat and ink issue. Vacuum is just trying to control these uncontrolled symptoms. And at a certain point, the vacuum is going to throw in the towel and say, I can't hold that down it will not stay put. Because if you just try to hold it in one place, it's gonna buckle in another. Nina, blocks light. I, I keep this in there only because if you can't really see it, but it just, the gloss differential and the, the inconsistency of the surface, I cannot put enough ink on this to smooth it out and make it look really good. It might look fine hanging in a ceiling where you're not gonna see any of this, but I wouldn't consider optimal. Uh, it is technically a blackout paper. The idea was you could print two-sided. I've never been happy enough with side one to be willing to put that together. And then the Nina 225 matte, eh, it, you just need so much ink and it's never going to good look good on a photographic image. Uh, the Sil poster color, yes, ran that just fine. It's a thinner paper, runs okay, nice matte finish. I think for a lot of display type stuff where you're looking for a low end price, that would be fine. But again, you're going to have to run 12 pass, 70%, maybe 80%. If I can get to 80, that's great. 90 is like hooray. And then you have to be aware that you can only put so much heat to it. Usually my temperatures sit around 185. And then universal coated and bonds, I can do those all day long. For some reason, this really thin paper, the really thin bond cheap paper that people use, it works pretty well in there. I think it has to do with the fact that they're not necessarily expecting like photo grade. I mean, it's an inexpensive bond. And I don't think that they expect that um, um, I have to, so I can run it with, with low heat without a lot of ink and still get a very good looking print. And because the paper is thin, the paper doesn't buckle as much and the um, limited amount of heat that I have in there allows it to all completely dry. So it cures at lower temperatures. The ink doesn't have enough memory being thicker that it will actually be a little more pliable. And then usually the expectations are not as high as photo printing. If the customer wants photo printing, the HP resin coated every day and professional satin poster paper are my two best choices. It just gets the job done. The prints look great, customer's happy. Don't overcomplicate this. And then the next choice would be the SIL 3699. Those are my two top three choices, depending on the paper. Uh, moving on to Canvas. Hey, let me check in with everybody. Is everything, because sometimes what happens is if like, if I lose audio or something, I'll talk for 10 minutes and not even know if like you guys are still there. Uh, Paul, are you still there? Yep, I'm, I'm here. We can hear you. <clears throat> Excuse me. No problem. Great. No. I can see you, Paul. Yep. All right. It's usually a halfway point or so I check in and just make sure I'm not talking to the air. <laughs> I've had that happen before. And it's kind of funny. Uh, I also got to keep my, I usually I have like an electrified tennis racket for the carpenter bees and a few other things that I, uh, so we're at the halfway point. Good. Roughly. Canvas. Um, we can print on just about any canvas on the market. You have largely two types, a two in one and a one in one. This is the Aurora. Expression semi gloss. This is your top of the line canvas. Aurora, uh, gloss, matte, also, uh, yeah, expressions gloss. This has got a lot of weight to it. This has got to almost be like 20 ounces or something. Ultraflex, true value or a true canvas, G clay, 
two-in-one weave. Most of this stuff is predominantly cotton or a large part cotton, cotton polyester blends. It's two-in-one, it's expensive, and is designed to be stretched. And then because of that two-in-one, the stretch does not sag. It's what you use for gallery presentations like that you would get for the family. Okay, it's a little higher end. And then all of that runs beautiful. Um, a hallmark of latex on canvas is our inks are neutral to whatever the surface is. So we are gloss on gloss, matte on matte. Solvents is generally gloss on matte. It's just gloss. They don't have that nice shift. And I do use quite a bit of matte. Um, I like a matte canvas. Most of our fine art people like a matte canvas. Aurora Expressions, this is a natural canvas. So it has all the hallmarks of your natural kind of rustic look. And uh, the artsy people like this stuff quite a bit. HB every day. Now we're getting into less expensive canvas. It can either be a two-in-one going to a one-in-one -one weave, or you can have a different surfacing. You know, less treatment, less gesso coating, and the coating has it have a little more irregular. This is a little more of a matte finish or a luster. This is a true matte from Sill. If this were a gloss or a, a solvent, it would be glossy. It would look ridiculous. It defeats the purpose of the matte canvas. Then Aurora makes products, for example, decor. This is one and one. This is thin. Um, Ultraflex is like the 285. Um, I think that's their inexpensive canvas. That's what you're going to run into a lot more when you're doing commercial uh, hotels, that kind of stuff. They stretch it. It goes on the wall. It lasts a reasonable amount of time. Sometimes, too, they use that light stuff with a bigger print. So I have some really big prints in my house, um, like 8 foot by 12 foot type stuff. It's really hard with a heavy canvas to stretch that around frames that big. So it's much better if you use a lighter canvas and then stretch it around. It'll work a lot better on those big displays. So the one-in-one -one is a nice white point. It's almost always all polyester. It's inexpensive. We have quite a few of them on the media locator. Different purpose and different price point than true like gallery canvas. Films, this would be your roll-ups. Roll-ups and pop-ups. Roll-up goes into a, into a device and rolls up and they have a backer on it. I use a lot of this Sill Polysol 3515. It's got a nice matte finish, nice gray back to it. Sill always has good coatings. I think that's a hallmark of their product line. HP Everyday has a durable blockout. Kernow makes a very nice roll up. This is the Sill 11 mil. This would be more your pop up. This is used more for trade shows. They put Velcro on the back and stick it to uh, displays, pop up displays at trade shows. A DAF makes a nice polypropylene blockout film, which I've also done double-sided. Kernel Verso, the Verso essentially means that it's double-sided capability. Since we can do it and you have a stand-up, one of the virtues of a latex is that, hey, I can not have a gray back on it. We can have it on both sides if you want. And then the Dentura is the same thing. I mentioned the Dixon earlier. I use a lot of these for roll-ups. I think they look really good in a roll-up. Uh, some people prefer the white back. Some people prefer the gray back. There's a lot of companies that make that. There's another category used for roll-ups, which would be like banners, vinyl or PET, super smooth. So like Ultraflex, PET, 10-ounce, super smooth. Fair warning. Um, it may be possible to do that and not have enough waving or warping from the temperature that it will actually look good. But you are in the right at the far outlier of what latex can do. Because those banners are so heat sensitive and your goal is gonna be in a roll up that has to be smooth and it has to be viewed up close. So you don't have a lot of room to put it a little bit at a distance. It's not hanging on a chain link fence. It's right when you walk in. And if that isn't smooth, they'll say, well, what's the point of a smooth banner? 10 ounce, thin. Temperature sensitive, PET being more temperature sensitive than PVC, but they're both challenging. So you get into that super inexpensive, thin, super smooth, no scrim roll ups, you may have trouble with latex. I start that stuff at 12 pass with an interpass delay or 16 pass 
I bring the temperature down to about 180 to 185 degrees, and I'm happy if I can get 80% ink down. If I can do 90, that's a miracle because the material just won't take any heat. And I have to run slow and I have to take the ink I can get. Some prints look fine, some prints don't. It's kind of a gray area. It, you know, I have people doing it successfully, I have people struggling, and it really just depends. So just be aware that's sort of an outlier area. Now, if I can get a polyester or a coated polypropylene, HP, for example, sells a coated polypropylene. Those work really well because the coating allows me to run low temperature and it bonds and I can get enough ink down that the prints look good. Anything in a roll-up is always going to be point of purchase, point of sale. You're viewing it from like me to this camera. There's a lot of other things that hang way over there and nobody's ever going to notice. You know, you hang up some pole banners, you put them up there in a truck, they're not seeing them except from the ground. They don't know exactly what it looks like. Backlit banner and other backlit things. Um, these are all translucent backlits. This would be Ultraflex View Light is probably one of the best known for doing sign faces outdoor. These would normally be sewn with grommets or some other install, uh, hanging mechanism, and then they go into these big outdoor display boxes, and then they're outdoor permanent banners, uh, 3M FS. This is the 3F, 3M FS1. This is their new outdoor sign face backlit product. Uh, then you have vinyl, peel and stick vinyl that's translucent. So this is the Orajet, Orafall Orajet. I use a lot of this. They have a nice preset on their website, which I recommend. And this is the 3850. You are putting more ink down on this. So I'm probably doing 16 past 200%, 20 past 230. I am over inking it because it's going to go onto an acrylic face. It's going to slide into a light box. Here's the 3M 3630. I have a paper, <laughs> this is a paper backlit. It's hardly called a paper anymore because it has so much coating. It's practically a vellum. This might be used for say an inexpensive approach to a bus light box kind of thing. And sometimes it doesn't even have a light in it. What you have is translucence. So translucence can come from a lit product or a window provides translucence because any light coming through that window is gonna reduce the effectiveness of the ink. So if you did 90% density with no translucence, it'll look good. You put translucence behind it, now that 90% looks like 60 because the light is coming through and it's reducing the effectiveness of the ink. So you over ink to some degree anytime you're in a window or in you're in a light box. And to what degree varies, depends on how much light is coming through to affect it. Here's an Orifal clear. So a clear would go into a window the question is, how much light do you get through and how deep do you want to have the ink? I generally treat clears almost like backlits. I go 175, 185, 200% density because I'm going to put it in that window. Depending on different times of the day, you're going to get light shining through it. And I always want to make sure I have enough color. Avery SF100, this is a clear film. Pretty close to uh, uh, optically clear, but not entirely. And then here's also a 3M clear film. I don't have one with me, but HP has a new clear film that doubles. It's a clear film that doubles as a laminate. It has a white liner. It's a clear film, so you can print on it and peel it and cut it and put it into the, like the outsides of a window. It also, if you want to double use it, you can just put it in the laminator and laminate onto your vinyl. So it is a printable laminate film. And it's nice because you only have one product. You don't have two. So you always have a clear film handy and it can work as a laminate when you're not using it for that. So that is one of the things that I do like about the HP. And also if you have a white liner, it's easy to go to the cutter. If you have a clear liner, you have to put like a white uh, adhesive vinyl on the cutter so that it can see the registration marks. Backlit films, this is PET backlit, polyester backlit films. LED light boxes, peel, pull away the edges, put this in there and close the edges. This is the SIL 3746. 3746 is certified. I prefer the SIL Vivalux 3747, which is a little thicker. The reason I like it, I'll use the 3646 profile, but put it on the heavier material. I like it because when you go into a light box and it's too thin, what happens is the thin polyester tries to kind of fall on itself. 
and the the system in there usually doesn't hold it down well enough. If it's a little thicker, when the system holds it, it pushes it down and it can't kind of curl on it and try to sag at the edges. So a slightly more rigid film to me is preferable. Uh, HP polyester, nice backlit film, and the Natura ES690, also a very nice backlit film for light boxes. We are now in the home stretch in wall coverings. PVC. I partner primarily with Dreamscape. Dreamscape's my primary relationship for PVC, PVC wall covering. They have a product called High Performance, HP High Performance. It's in suede, mystical, all of their line has a version of this. I divide it into two categories. If I'm printing a photographic image like this, I could probably use the regular or the high, high performance. Either one would be okay. If I'm doing solid colors, where that color match and the color consistency is gonna be very important, it's gonna be more coding dependent. What Roy over at Dreamscape has done is he has improved his coatings considerably. They've been working on it for a long time, not just the coating itself, but the application of the coating. So at the newest version of the high performance, I think they have the best coating on the market. I don't think anyone in his, his, he could confidently say, I have the best coded product to print to for PVC vinyl and, or banner, and I would agree with him. Okay, so this is my preference wall covering. Now, if you have a photo image, that critical, the criticalness of having everything line up just so is not as critical, it's not as important. So you might wanna, and the HP costs a little bit more, not a lot, but a little bit more. So those are some judgment calls. Here's Dreamscape Mystical, Dreamscape Canvas, Dreamscape Plaster. So an, a, um, a photographic image of a mural on plaster, probably you wouldn't need to go to the higher coating, but if you were printing smooth or a, a, a stipple, I would definitely switch it up. Vescom also makes a very nice wall covering. This is called the Vescom Sand. That is a nice PVC product. Choregraphics is the biggest name in wall covering, I think, still. Um, they do run well. I have less, more consistency issues. Some of it is the way latex affixes versus some other UV technologies. But for the most part, I think I get a better coating with the Dreamscape than I get with the Choregraphics. I think they've invested a little more in the coatings to ensure that they're more compatible with a latex printer. Although Roy expressly says, look, this coating is designed for all technologies. It will improve whether it's UV solvent or latex will look better on my products. And I, I tend to agree with them. Next up, HP PVC free wall covering. This is the durable suede, the durable smooth. This is a suede, this is the smooth. These are commercial grade, just like the PVC type two wall coverings. What's unique about them is they will meet type two certification with no lamination. So if I'm gonna go down to, I know that the aquarium is gonna do a whole new installation. I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna sell them on two things. You're the aquarium. So you cannot use PVC. That's what you have up there now. That's a terrible idea. You shouldn't be using PVC. It leaches, it's bad for the environment, it's not Green Guard certified, it's not Forest Stewardship Council, it's not recyclable, it's not the same thing, don't use that. They'll say, okay, then what do we use? HP, durable suede or durable smooth. Green Guard certified, Forest Stewardship Council, water-based tanks, um, it's great for hospitals and things like that too because it breathes unlike PVC and you don't need to put a laminate coat on it to achieve type two. You have ketchup, mustard, scratching, cleaners, everything's been thrown at this. And this is very durable, commercially durable without having to laminate. If I have a latex printer, those are my two primary commercial wall coverings that I put in front of a customer. Okay, these are hung. These are paste wall coverings. This isn't peel and stick. Same with the other stuff I just showed you. These are all traditional commercial grade wall coverings. But this is the PVC generation that stepped up and now we have no need for lamination. I think that also emphasizes how good our scratch resistance and our scuff resistance and our resistance to chemicals and cleaners and tea and coffee and everything else is. You do not get type two certified but in these cases, they meet them. There's a slightly different standard for PVC free products. You do not get commercial grade wall covering without having 
laminate in most cases. We don't need the laminate. We can bypass laminate because our face of this is so good even with our printed ink. UV does not have type two certification with no laminate. We do. So I think it is really a hallmark in how good, it's a baseline laid down for how good Latex Gen 3 is printing on durable wall covering. Then you have Dixon. These are PVC free products that Dixon, Dixon makes. Omni, this is a paper-based wall covering, traditional paper wall covering. Nina makes a very nice paper-based wall covering that I strongly recommend. That's also certified. Sill, embossed wall covering. Uh, this one here by Sill, oh, where is it? Maybe it's in another place. Design to wall. The Dreamscape, Dreamscape also makes PVC free products. This is their Terralon. They have another one called Nolar. And then Allstrom, it's more sold out of Europe, but Allstrom is also a very nice uh, non-woven focused PVC free wall covering company. And they have a couple other SKUs that I'll get to in a second. This is for all your vehicle wrap people. You don't use paste. Paste is for wall covering or wall hangers, paper hangers. Peel and stick is what vehicle wrap people to do walls. Um, I have a ton of it. Um, Avery crushed stone, Avery stucco. This is PVC, linered peel and stick. Uh, Aurora has a new one to compete with Phototex. It looks very good. It's heavy. Okay, this is PVC free. These are all polyester non-woven, and it has this beautiful kind of linen-like texture on it. So you put this on a wall, it looks really good. It's also heavy, which makes it easy to install, and they have a nice adhesive. This is a new product. It has also been tested to meet our durable type two. That's how they tested it on the wall covering. So you're gonna have very good scratch and scuff resistance in addition to being certified. Um, probably the most widely used Phototex. Again, PV, this is a PET product. It is not PVC. It is environmentally friendly. It's repositionable. They probably own most of the peel and stick a repositionable wall covering market in the US. They have an excellent adhesive. Walter and the guys have been with us for a long time. They know a lot about latex. If you call them or have any issues, they have all kinds of information. Plus they have support with PDFs and everything. This is also print and cuttable, so you can cut this into shapes. A very, very nice product. Um, I have a roll of it that I just got in from the demo center brought over here. Because uh, I want to play around with it in the house. I think it's a really great thing to use. Avery 2611. This is a heavyweight six mil peel and stick wall adhesive. Low tack. Okay, it's not going to be aggressive. On a wall over there, you can probably barely see it. It says Garage Academy. It's stuck on the wall. I had to use IJ40 with a heat gun and a squeegee because otherwise it wasn't going to stick. This would not stick to that. This is designed to stick on a very compatible plaster-based painted wall that doesn't have any grime on it because the adhesive is not aggressive. It's designed to take it down again when you want to take it down. It's only up there as a temporary display, not a permanent display. And therefore the adhesive is uh, constructed accordingly. Uh, MacTech Deco Mural, this is their canvas, very heavy canvas textured. And then also a similar one from Presto, which is a canvas textured peel and stick wall covering. Most of the peel and stick stuff tends to be PVC. Aurora and uh, Phototex are both making a, uh, a PET version of peel and stick wall covering. This is PVC free self-adhesive. So for the DIYers, okay, DIYers can't do paste. They can, but they'll end up, you know, like having a fight. And then you got peel and stick. They got a 50-50 chance of pulling that off. Mostly they're going to screw up a bunch of panels and have to order new ones. Or worse, they're going to screw up panels and want you to print them for free. This is the easiest thing for somebody who knows nothing to do. You get it wet, get it on the back, get the wall wet, slide it in place, tap it down with a squeegee or a sponge, put the next panel in the next panel. Okay, you can trim it, it's paper, it's easy to print. When you want to take it off, get it nice and wet and it'll come back off the wall. I have a lot of people that use this for displays and installations instead of low-tech vinyl because you can also get this wet and remove it. So this is a potato paste. It's very simple to use. 
It's forgiving. You can get it up easily. You can have people with very limited skill sets do this because all you have to do is slide it in place and you have a drift movement before you commit. And then once you line it up where you want it, then you can commit to it. It's the only one I do myself because it's the only one I have any confidence in. Then you have the, your higher end self-paced. So Sill has a product pre-pasted, the uh, 2522, the white point on this is unbelievable. I mean, it's really good. This is what I would use like if I did the Coke Museum because they're gonna be so picky about that red, I can't have anything that doesn't have a really good white point. So I get really good red on this and this is self-paced. It also is kind of this glass bead technology and it is expensive. But you know what, in the high-end wall covering market, there's all kinds of expensive stuff. Let me show you, for example. I got this in just yesterday, so I'll show you what this is. This is a product called Squid, all right? And some people in the US are selling this, it's Squid. I have it in my front window, and it is almost like a linen, and it's a really thin peel and stick for windows and displays that gives you uh, optical blockage, so it'll like, Let's say you're in a nice conference room in Manhattan and uh, everyone can see into your window and you're tired of playing with the blinds. So you just put a blocker in there so that you can have window or, or sun reduction, but also privacy. And they have all different colors and levels of privacy, but it's done out of this really high-end looking linen. And it looks great. It's expensive as all get out, but they're selling it. They're selling it because people want it. And in that universe, paying for a really nice, white point wall covering like this is not that big a deal. Okay, they'll pay for it. They just want something that looks really good and then maybe hits the corporate colors you're looking for that you're missing with other products. Alstrom, they also make a very nice spray up wall covering. This Alstrom wall covering is extremely effective. It looks good. It's a matte finish. Um, spray up versions of the regular traditional wall coverings. And all of these are Alstrom to close out. So wall covering is PVC paste, PVC free paste, self-adhesive, and then pre-pasted. All of those are wall covering categories. There is one other wall covering category. I don't know where to put this categorically. It defies, it's a point of purchase, point of sale system. And this, uh, this particular one is by Visual Magnetics. So Visual Magnetics kind of invented this thing. And what they do is you use a very strong magnet film and you put that on the wall, usually with self-adhesive, okay? So I take self-adhesive and I make my wall behind here magnetized. Now I can print on their ferrous film, which basically has metal in it. And this film is attracted to that magnet in a really strong way. It's not one of those weak magnet systems where you put ferrous oxide into paint and then the paint allows you to put magnets, but the magnets always fall off. This is like sticking. I mean, you can put shelves up that'll stick to it. So this here is now a system that you can put up and take down at any time and then roll up and save. These are magnetized point of purchase, point of sale systems, but since they go on a wall, I guess you could categorize them as wall covering, but it's really more like magnet point of purchase, point of sale. So it's a specialty product. Um, Visual Magnetics invented this. They had the patent for quite a while. Now uh, Ultraflex and other companies are selling variations of this. I still think this is my favorite out there if I had to do it. So Visual Magnetics, that falls into that category. Also oddball categories, and I just got some of this in. Jessup Catwalk. It is a highly textured floor and wall film. And this is printable with latex. It's not on the media locator, but you know, with a little finesse, it's not hard to do. This was all made, I'm running 16 pass with a 365 printer, mostly because I wanna put a bunch of ink down. Okay, I, this is a more expensive material. It's going to be tray chose, um, the catwalk they use for uh, carpeting. And I can print and cut this. And this is a short-term floor graphic. Now, we have some in our demo center that's pushing a year and still looks good, so it can be more than short-term. Asphalt art, this is the same idea of a texture material, but it's peel and stick for outdoor cement. So this would be for like outdoor behind 
in my driveway there where you would walk along. Think of like the San Diego Zoo with a bunch of animal prints everywhere. That's what you would use the asphalt art for. But then again, you have the problem of skateboarders, okay? And they completely destroy this stuff. You can't put it underneath a car tire either. I tried that. Parking lot is a no. But um, I put this out around HP for quite a while, and uh, it has been kind of cool. Also, Kernel Floor Shark. This is a peel and stick. It has a texture to it for floor graphics. It is a polyester floor graphic film. Now, you can always use any adhesive vinyl, put a non-slip laminate on it, and put it on the floor. I use IJ40 because I trust the adhesive or an Avery or a, you know, a little, I want either 3M Avery or Orifol because I trust the adhesive when I want to remove it. That's when you pay the price. That's when you find out if your vinyl was cheap or not. And if you put a laminate on it, anything will stick to the floor. Then the question is, well, how long do you want it on there? Uh, two weeks? Well, then don't put such an aggressive adhesion. But with a heavy laminate, it usually gathers any vinyl together and allows it to come off the floor unless the adhesive is cheap, and then you'll be on there with goo off trying to get that done. And you'll only do that once, and then you'll never do it again. So we learn through suffering. It's sort of the human condition. You know what? Uh, uh, Will Rogers, the famous American humorist, said, men learn in different ways. Some do by reading, learn by reading, some men by watching, and some men just have to urinate on the electric fence. Uh, I'm probably of the third category most of the time, but getting older, now I'm learning to use one of the first two categories and save myself the trouble. Uh, this is specialty material, Sombrella Poly Oxford White, and this is Versailles Dig, so this is for awnings, Sombrella awning material. Sombrella is currently offering a five-year system with a marabou laminate on their awning systems. And then Versaidig Sun Protects. Versaidig is probably the most widely available sunblock shades in the U.S. This is a really good market. Latex does very well in it. You custom make sunblock shades, trim them. You don't, you don't even need to use anything special. You don't laminate, put them right into the window block shades. Uh, here's another one, Junkers and Mueller, very nice, called the Opera. It's a little more uh, translucent, but it looks great. Um, it's a linen texture. This would look really good in window shades. And having custom window shades, you know, where you sit in a room, your conference room again, you press a button, it goes, and every one of them has like a pattern that stretches all the way across them that's custom made for the customer. Hey, the artsy fartsy people love that kind of stuff. And they can use their colors. They can use any any color combination because it's digitally printed. It's not like you have to buy, and those are your choices. And then this is an oddball thing. It's Cromwell printable leather. Cromwell printable leather. Yes, somebody found a way to make a genetic hybrid of a cow and a roll, and then you have a cow roll. And so the cow roll is made in Spain someplace. I don't want to see it. I don't want to know, and they turn a cow into a, a rolled thing that you can print on. It's a little tricky to print on because there's some irregularities because invariably it's a cow. It's not like adhesive or upholstery grade stuff, so you can print on upholstery PVC all day long. I usually have some. I don't have some with me, but you can print on upholstery PVC or you can print on printable leather. In both of those cases, be aware of one key thing. When things are shipped in rolls, especially upholstery, whether it's leather or poly, uh, polyvinyl chloride, what we now call in the high end, vegan leather. So vegan leather is PVC alternative to cow. That's marketing for you. So vegan leather is PVC or pleather or naga hide, you know, what we used to look down on naga hide. I have a leather sofa, not a naga hide sofa. Now the market has shifted back to PVC naga hide to avoid using leather, but in both cases, they come in a roll. And that roll is usually gonna have like anti-slip surfaces on it so that when it rolls on itself, it doesn't all kind of stick. You want it to glide off. Those are hard to print to because now you have a third party surface that's interfering with the ink getting on. Uh, you gotta sometimes reach out to the factory and say, send me a roll that doesn't have any of that treatment. And they can pull a roll or two out before it gets there and ship it to me. Then you can really test how effective it is. Some of the lower end stuff doesn't ship with that on it. And that actually prints better because it doesn't have the 
intermediary coating that's interfering with the ability of the ink to bond to it. But make no mistake, latex prints very well directly to leather, and latex prints very well directly to naugahyde or vegan leather. Fabric. I will keep fabric fairly simple. I use, overwhelmingly, top value fabric because it's durable tested. We can print on any fabric. Okay, it looks great. Uncoated, coated, it doesn't matter. We want the best scratch and scuff resistance we can get. So we work together with some treatment people and they work together with some fabric people and they created a treated, but no smell, no bad hand. It feels just like uncoated fabric. It is a, it is a, a dip coated basically. And then when you print to it, you get a four or better on a dry crock test. And this is called durable latex fabric. If you look in the media locator, there's a category there. It says durable textiles, it'll list them all on. And I would say the one I use the most of is Top Value. Top Value imports a product called Ulrich. Ulrich is the manufacturer. They're on the roll nice. I have a roll that I just got sent in here from the demo center. You have Panorama, you have Top Value Digi Stretch, you have competition, you have impact. Those are all really nice, high quality fabrics that are durable that I recommend. I think right now Top Value has about seven SKUs. Any one of those, those are your best choices. You'll be happy. We, I print it on every fabric, everything, everything, all of them. We also have a few outliers that are also durable. For example, Ultraflex has a durable Seal makes it durable. Aurora Linen prints really well, but it's not durable. This is the Ultraflex Ultra Poplin. This is coated, and the coating gives us durability. This would also be good for some short-term outdoor applications. Aurora Expressions, this is like a decor canvas. Mailer, this is one of the few fabrics. It's coated, it's so heavily coated, it's almost a Fabra banner. I mean, I don't know if I can call this a fabric because it's it's like a fabric dipped in polyvinyl chloride and then it becomes a banner right and then you have burger the burger sambas those all work very nicely top value has a mesh this is a polyester mesh so this is like an environmentally friendly mesh aurora linen which i mentioned a little earlier simi has a metallic fabric um, there's a lot of things that work but i do recommend drifting around the durable fabrics now I just took a bunch of durable fabric, and this was out in the sun, or out in the rain. I left this outside, and I, for, I got busy with something and forgot to do it. This is a CalComp frame, basically. It's a frame that allows you to install into the edges of it without the need to have a CalComp, signed comp frame, so that you don't have to have a silicon edge graphics sewn in. Normally, most sign displays these days are using silicon edge. Here's another one that uses a, a self-adhesive Keter tape, or you can sew them in. These are all options to do installation, but usually you want some kind of silicon edge, and that's what you tuck into the frame system. That's what you see with most of the frame systems these days. And this is kind of a testament to our water fastness. So this sat out last night in a storm, like this side up. So I came out this morning and I left it on the table in the back and it rained like a lot, like woke me up, pouring rain, wind everywhere. I get up in the morning and I realize I left this outside and it's sitting like this and it's covered in these little tree things. There's still a bunch of them on there, but there's no problem. You can get latex wet. It's not going to bleed. It's not going to warp. It, it, if I got it really wet and I started scrubbing at it, you could get some of it to activate. But if you just get it wet, if it gets wet, it's not a big deal. And so this is perfectly fine. And this is a classic front lit silicon edge graphic system that goes into a frame. And this is what you see most of the time now in all different size levels. Now, the really, the really big thing is to print silicon edge graphics at like eight foot by 20 feet. And that's what you see in airports and all that. What's an airport? Anyway, when we used to have airports, they did these eight foot by 12 foot displays, these huge things. The reason they want the fabric is because it's super light and all the other alternatives were really heavy. 
So you can take a fabric, soft fold it, put it in a box, ship it away. It's just like doing a bed sheet, corner, 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 and now you have this beautiful print. It sits up there, Galaxy 10 or whatever they're releasing, they pull it out. Oh, now we have the Apple 10 I have, we're gonna put that up. That's what that's for. Now with the smaller latex printers, you can only go 64 inches wide. So some of the really big stuff you can't do. But if you go to a trade show and look around, there's an awful lot of displays that are like tall, but not that wide. That's fair game for latex. This market normally is handled by die sub, but we compete with die sub and HP has a line of die sub. It's called the stitch. We compete with it in a lot of cases where somebody says, Tim, I want to be able to do all this because I want versatility. Die sub is a single focus application, polyester fabric. I can print on polyester fabric, my polyester fabrics are going to feel just like dye sub. The quality is going to be very close to dye sub, but I can do all these other things as well. And with the durable crock resistant, you can sew them and put them in light boxes or put them in frontlets and they'll both work. Now, speaking of light boxes, HP durable, it's durable for, for a better and dry crock test, light box fabric. This is a very, I will put this against most, most, if not, I'll just say, anybody that wants to compete, I'll do the best print I can on a Latex 365 backlit, put it in a light box. And I'll call all the dice up people and say, get whatever fabric you want to use, I don't care. Now it's almost always going to be coded for them too, to get the best stuff. They want to compete. I think Latex in some key areas for resolution, clarity, um, Overall impact, I can compete with the very best of the dye sub printers out there. With a lot of them, I'm going to have a better product. I will have sharper image, better resolution. I will have deeper blacks. And you got to really know what you're doing with dye sub. With this, you download the preset, put this in the printer, print it, sew the gaskets on, put it in the light boxes. Our light boxes with this durable backlit look fantastic. Your second choice would probably for me be a product by. Ultraflex called Mambo. The Vortex Mambo backlit fabric is also very good. I don't think this has the clarity of the black with no pinholing that the HP product does. Both of them work really well. Do not, if you have an opportunity and you know you can sew it, do not turn down a backlit job. You can do it with latex. One note, anything printing backlit on decoded fabric you have to roll it, you cannot fold it. You could fold it, but there's too much of a chance that it will press and you'll get a crease. That is equally true of die sub. They also have to roll if they're coated. If they print uncoated, the quality of the backlit print is not gonna be as good. It's gonna look much lighter. It's not gonna have the depth of color and everything else because you achieve that through a coating. So in both cases, you wanna roll the backlit simply because of that coating. The stuff that I'm talking about with durable top value fabrics, I soft, like the competition, I soft fold it, slide it in a box and ship it. Take it back out again, let the wrinkles go out. The Digi Stretch is probably the best one for wrinkle resistance. And then our last fabric. Ooh, I am consistently late. This is the durable, natural fiber and washable Premex. So this is linens, cottons, and linen cotton blend, all three. I use this around the house a lot. This Newport, this image from Newport of uh, Ganesh is in my front windows. I sewed it into a block out and then put it in the window to prevent the sun from destroying a rug. It looks really nice. It doesn't have a low end look. It's natural. Um, in my case, since I just put it up in a window and I wasn't ever going to spill anything on it and I didn't have a need to wash it, I did not heat fix it. If you choose to take these products, they have a treatment in them. When you heat fixation to 350 degrees, it activates that, that treatment. The treatment encapsulates the ink and it gives you durability for actual fabrication of mostly vertical home decor markets. So drapes, uh, blinds throw pillows, bags, that kind of thing. I probably wouldn't use it to make a sofa, but you could use it to make the throw pillows on the sofa. It has washable durability, so at least up to three washes. The heat fixation brings it to another level. It gives us a washable product. 
on latex. Dye sub can't print on any of this. Okay, dye sub inks do not print on 100% cotton. They don't print on linen. They don't print on natural fibers. There is a ink set that does, but then you have to swap out your whole ink set system. And from what I understand, many of the ink systems that do natural fibers, my little 365 competes directly with them, if not better, and theirs are like thousands and thousands of dollars more. So I have this very elegant little printer that prints on all this stuff and then also prints on linen so that the School of uh, Textile at North Carolina State University has one and all of their students doing their student projects for knockups and displays and everything are all printing on natural fibers and they're all using a latex printer. And they have access to everything. But this little printer, it's easy to use, it's inexpensive, it's crazy versatile, and printing on all those natural fibers and then they, they make them into pillows and dresses and all this sort of show stuff. You no, know, you're not gonna make clothing with it to wear, but you can certainly make it for all your uh, knockups and all your prototyping and it looks really good. It looks the nicest thing you're gonna have to the actual item being made. That is the application presentation. Um, it's actually much bigger. It's probably a two hour presentation. I keep trying to condense it, but the trouble is, you know, we keep adding things like the squids. You know, this is new. They sent me some rolls. I ran it. I started putting it in windows. It works great. Love it. Mine is in the outside. I mean, it's facing the elements. So I'm going to see how long it lasts direct in the elements. It's on the front door and they look pretty cool. You know, it's a great front door approach and it's a lot nicer looking than window perf or window vinyl. Plus it has the added advantage that, you know, you get some sun through. You're not just completely blocking everything out. I think we are at the question time. All right. Well, now, if you had any, I think if you had any chatty things, then Paul probably took care of them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think this was great. Paul, you have anything to add? Uh, no, I think Tim always does an outstanding job. Um, so no, I think I'm, I think I'm, uh, I'm good. All right. Well, excellent. Well, thank you, Timothy and Paul. That was great information. Uh, as, uh, as Timothy said, we're going to open uh, the group for questions. Although I feel like we, you provided a ton of information. I think that was really thorough and great. I think everyone appreciates that. While we wait, uh, I once again want to thank Timothy and Paul for sharing this information. Uh, I think everybody now has a better understanding of uh, all the different applications that HP uh, can help them with, especially these latex printers. Um, let me now take a moment to tell you uh, briefly about IT Supplies. As many of you know, IT Supplies is here to support your needs for everything related to the perfect print. Our knowledgeable staff and tech support specialists are here to help you with supplies and support to keep your business running. In addition, we are posting daily videos on our YouTube channel to help with many of your commonly asked questions. Please contact your sales representative for assistance uh, on anything you may need. If you don't know how to contact your sales rep, you can call 1-800-771-9665 and ask for a commercial sales specialist. We are here to help you and your business succeed. Uh, at this time, uh, it appears uh, that I think you were just really thorough, Timothy. I, 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 don't, I don't honestly have any questions for you at this moment. So that was great. I mean, I even learned a ton. So this was amazing. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. All right. So for those of you who didn't get the message, this is the first of our April webinar series with HP and IT Supplies. Timothy and Paul will be joining us again next Thursday when we host another event focused on latex wall coverings and digital decor. Uh, in addition to this series, we are running a parallel series every Friday around textile watch our LinkedIn page for, or call your sales representative for additional details. Thanks, Timothy. Thank you, Paul, for coordinating the event with me. Uh, I hope everyone will walk away more knowledgeable. Thank you to our attendees. You've been great. Thanks, everyone. Take care.
All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for watching this. If you would like to see more of these videos, please go to our YouTube channel.